All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem here that we're going to fix, which is not too hard to do, and I hope you enjoy this. So, the issue for me is this hot water tank. The tank's fine. It's a Superstore Ultra. It's an indirect water heater. It's actually this valve right here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. And this valve is actually made by a company called Watts, and it's a temperature and pressure relief valve. You can almost always tell these valves by this little control here, and I don't want to lift it too far because the water will come out. So the issue that I'm having with this T and P valve, which is they're called a lot, is they typically are going to connect to your water tank. This one goes in horizontally here, but some of them will go in from the top, especially if you have an electric hot water heater. But the way you can almost always tell these valves is if you look down at the bottom, this has a drain pipe right here, and if you can see this, but there's a little bit of water here on the end of the pipe. And some of that is because I touched it. But if I go right down to the floor, you'll see that there's a little puddle here. And this water just keeps basically getting bigger and it keeps coming out. So you don't want to leave this because sometimes these valves can leak a lot more. So let's get started and change this valve out. And again, for the purpose of this video, what I'm doing is just changing the TMP valve, and I'll show you my situation. Yours might be a bit different, but I think the basics should hopefully help you understand what you're facing, because it is fairly simple. So first thing I'm going to do is, if you've got a water heater like this, you need to shut the boiler off, which is actually right here. And I've actually already turned them off. Just scroll down right here, these two switches, and they're off. So that means that the boiler is not going to run and this tank is not going to fire up. So that's step one. Second step I've got to do, you see a lot of valves here, but in my house I've got this one valve right here, and this is for hot water going to the rest of my house. So I'm going to switch that off, and with any hot water tank you've always got water going out, and in this case I've got water going in. And If you look at this right here it says hot water, this is actually the cold line that is feeding the tank. So again, if I back up a little bit, you want to think about the tank in this way. If you can shut off the water going to the tank, that stops it going in. And in my case, shut off the water going to the rest of the house. So remember, every hot water tank's got an in and an out. All these other pipes, you don't necessarily have to worry about, but the one thing you do have to worry about is, now that the water is off and the power is off, you've got to get the pressure and some water out of the tank. Because if I go and do this valve right now, all the water from the top of this to here is going to spill out, and that's a lot of water. So the next thing I'm going to do is get a hose connected to this drain valve. And this is important because some tanks like mine have this drain valve here, and I also have another drain valve that says boiler. That is not the one you're going to do. You are not touching the boiler lines that go into this tank. You're touching what's essentially the cold water line. And since I just shut that valve off, the only water that's going to come out is from the tank. All right, so now I've got a drain line attached to this tank. So again, remember, the power's off, the water going in is off, and in my case, I'm able to shut off the water from the house. So if you look right here, I've got my drain hose attached, everything's off, so I'm gonna open this valve, and you'll hear the pressure coming out. But there's gonna be a problem. As Soon as I open this, you'll notice you don't really hear water going anymore. Maybe a little bit, but the problem is, you need to get air into this tank. So right now, there's going to be some water flowing out, but not enough. So in my case, what I usually do is, on your temperature and pressure valve, this right here, I'm going to open this. But before I do it, what I want to do, I want to put a drain under this, just in case to catch any water that comes out. <clears throat> you want to be careful of. I want to let some air in, but I don't want the entire tank draining in my case if possible, because generally these valves are on the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this, and I'm going to see when water stops coming out, because that's going to tell me if water isn't coming out from here, then I know that the water is below this line. So let's open this a little bit. 
And if you notice, I just opened it. And if I look below, hear all that noise? There's no water coming out. What's actually happening is the air is coming out. So it's actually like a vent for this tank. You can hear all these weird noises. So that tells me that the water level is probably already below that line. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna actually shut this valve off. Let's see what happens. Just in case I miss it. Let's see if we get any water coming out. Okay, so now the valve's closed. And I don't really see a whole lot of water coming out of here. So that's good. So what I think we're gonna do now is we're gonna Leave this either open or close in my case, but we're gonna replace it now. I'm actually gonna open the drain again, just for another second to make sure that the water level's gone below. You can always drain out the whole tank, I just would prefer not to. So, close that valve again. So there's two things we need to do here. So I'm gonna close this back up, not that it really matters a whole lot. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this drain off. And this is just the drain line. If I zoom in, let's see, real close there. This particular piece here is threaded, and all I need for that is a simple wrench. So we're gonna put this on, like this. And I'm gonna hold on to it. And these are generally pretty loose because they don't have to be real tight to begin with. So, in a couple seconds, the drain's off. And you might be wondering why there's no sealant on this. It's not uncommon to have no sealant, so I wouldn't be nervous about that at all. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. And now, just to be sure, I'm gonna actually hold this little drain. Let's open this up and see how much water we're getting off of this. So we are getting a little bit, so when I take this off, I do think we're gonna see some water. And that's okay, a small amount's not gonna cause a big problem. So I'm gonna set that drain below. All right, so let's take a look at this closely. So we've got a fitting here, and this has something you can grip, and then we've got the valve. If I just go and I twist this valve, say I put this wrench right on it, just like this, and I just start turning, if I just push like this to unloosen it, there's a very good chance this could spin or this rest of this pipe could be damaged. So what I wanna do is I wanna use two wrenches and I wanna hold on to this. So what I'm gonna do is get a second wrench and you'll see how I do this. All right, so to get these off, what you really need to do is use two wrenches. You're gonna put one wrench on the fitting or the part of your tank that is not coming off. So I'm gonna put this on and I'm, with this wrench, I'm actually gonna hold this way, this direction, and with this much, much larger wrench, I'm actually gonna go in the opposite direction. So, this is, all right. So now, all right. I'm sorry I had to get in front of the camera on you there, but you'll see, sometimes, you are, I'm just gonna open this to make absolutely sure there's no more water in there. Sometimes you're better off using a larger wrench just to make sure that you can get it off. There's no fun when you get the smaller wrench and it slips and you have all kinds of problems. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna unthread this by hand since it's loose enough. I already hear this, whoa, some water in there. So when you take this out, you're gonna see this probe. And this is totally normal, and this is actually why it's called the TMP, because this is the temperature as well as pressure. So this probe, when it gets too hot, it'll open up. It's only an emergency valve, but these do tend to leak when they're a certain amount of age. This doesn't look really too bad inside, if you can see that, but that doesn't always mean much of anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this now. So while you have it open, it's never a bad idea just to be a little gently, just wipe the inside of that. The big thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna leave any big amount of lint or anything like that, but I do wanna make sure that if there's any debris in here that I get it out. So I'm also gonna explain one other part of this to you. 
So one thing you might notice is, let's move this. So you notice that this probe right here is a certain length. And if you notice, this probe has to extend into the tank. So when this was installed, if you can see this, this really doesn't reach in far enough per the design. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace this with the correct size and I'm going to show them next to each other so you can see it. So I'm also going to explain one other part of this to you. So one thing you might notice is, let's move this, so you notice that this probe right here is a certain length and if you notice this probe has to extend into the tank so when this was installed if you can see this this really doesn't reach in far enough per the design so one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna replace this with the correct size and I'm gonna show them next to each other so you can see it so this is our new valve and at first I'll hold it back a little bit so you can see it it's basically the same valve but if you notice that stem is much much longer so the reason that is is when this goes into the tank it needs to have part of this in the actual tank water so this is actually the correct length because it's supposed to protrude into the tank and it varies a little bit by code but generally you can't go too long with these but you can go too short and this orange is just for my water it's a little bit of um, iron in it however it's not too too bad so the next thing I need to do is put a little bit of thread sealant on it and this is the thread sealant I like this is Rectoseal 5 it's been around for ages I tend to have great luck with it whenever I put it on I don't have any leaks and that's what I like so so a couple of things with this they say to stir it so I am going to stir it up a little bit I'm going to stir that up And now you don't want to get the sealant inside the valve. The key is to just get it on the threads as much as you can, really. But you don't want to get it inside because this sealant could gum stuff up. So what I like to do is I rotate it a little bit, put a little bit there, brush it, brush it on. You don't want to leave any. I like to have it so it looks just like this. Now it looks like a lot. I spread it out a little bit. Anyways, the key is when you look down it, I don't have any sealant on the inside of it. And that's the most important part. So now that this looks like it has a good amount of sealant on it, I'm going to reinsert the new unit. And, and I'm just making sure that this is free, which it is. So we're going to insert this all the way in. And the next thing, obviously, just make sure that the threads are spinning nice and smooth, which they are. And this time around, when you put this in, this has been in here for almost eight years, so I don't need to put this on incredibly tight. So what I'm going to do is twist it. And in this case, the wrench that I was using before, I'm actually going to put it on the opposite direction. I'm going to do this. Because th now, I'm actually spinning the valve in the reverse. So I'm going to do one more. I think that's going to do it. Right to there. I don't think it can go. Let's see. i got to back up a little bit. pretty good to me. So sometimes when you put these on, you're going to find out afterwards that this drain doesn't line up exactly. So you may need to adjust the valve a little bit. So in my case, I'm still not going to put thread sealant on this. I don't really think I need it. And what I'm going to do now is attach this back on. So for this one, you thread it on by hand. When it gets tight enough, you can use your wrench a little bit. Oh. You gotta watch it with this because right now I've got a long, long piece of pipe on this. 
so it's easy to move the valve. So I'm going to tighten this on just a little bit more. All right, I think we're just about done. So at the moment, so we've put everything back together. This is sealed up nice. I'll see if I can zoom in a little more for you. I think that's about it. So a couple things left I need to do is I'm going to clean up this excess sealant. And I only do that just so that it doesn't build up. It looks a little bit better. All right. So the next thing I need to do, it's good to leave the safety tag on. You don't have to. There's nothing to obviously do with the function of the valve. So what else do we need to do? So now we got to make sure that this valve that I had my hose on, let's see. All right. So now let's have a little close up on this valve. So now we've got a new valve in, right? And in my case, like I said, now we got the right length. So that valve, even though it looked really long, from here in now is the correct length. So a couple things we need to do to make sure that this valve is closed. And then we got to turn on the water that feeds the tank, which in my case is this one. And when you you're going to hear this. So the water is filling in the tank. And personally, right now, my house water valve is still off and you can see it up there. So what I want to do is I don't want all this air going in my house. So I'm actually going to open this bottom valve up again. Let's see. Let some of this air out of here. Just to get some of it out of the tank. Otherwise, all that air is going to run through my house. So right now, remember, the house water is on. And the drain is open on the bottom. I'm going to close that up. That should be letting enough in there. Okay, so at this point, we've put the water back on to the tank, but we haven't put the water back to the house. So that's the last step. So we're gonna open this valve, and at this point now, our house has the hot water again. So the last things you gotta do are turn your hot water tank power back on, or put your boiler back on in my case, and you're done. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe for future videos.